Chicago's defense and obviously they don't get it. So the score remains 11 to 6. Well Ken Talton gave it his best effort but there were just too many people up front and after a couple of mistakes by Chicago Stadiums now lead 11 to 6. George Allen talking to his defense. Talking to his defense. He said that while we were away, you're giving him too much time to throw the football. Birmingham has scored a touchdown, a field goal, and a safety in a minute and 41 seconds. Vince Juan, that's using your time. Yeah, that means either you're catching with some big plays or they're making mistakes. In this case, it was both. Lenny Willis with the ball on the kickoff return. Big hole up the sidelines for Willis. He comes back to the 35 where Scott Norwood knocks him out of bounds. Number four, Norwood. He loves to get in on the play. That's not the first time he's made the tackle on the kickoff. Unfortunately, though, when the kicker does make a tackle on the kickoff, it means they've returned it for some big yards. Bobby Scott comes back to quarterback for Chicago with 518 to go in the first half. Again, to update you, Chicago coming in at 10-5. Birmingham coming in at 8-7 on the season. Birmingham must win tonight to have any possibility of staying in the chase for a wild card spot. The Central Division has been tough and tight all season. Michigan and Birmingham both coming on strong late in the second half of the season. And Birmingham's defense, led by Jimmy Walker, swarms all over Bobby Scott. He fumbles the football, and let's see who has it. Birmingham people arguing on it but I doubt that because normally when a quarterback is in the grasp of a defender that whistle blows and that's the case here. That time uh, lining up at tight end for the Chicago Blitz was number 81 Tim Wright and now the UCLA replacing hey, Paul Ricker early in the game. I said that Rickers University of Norwich was outside of Boston. He is actually born raised outside of Boston. Norwich University is in Vermont. Second down and 16. Scott goes with it to the sideline. The pass is complete. And the receiver slipping and sliding and falling is Tremaine Johnson. Very difficult to keep your footing down there on uh, a well-worn rug at Legion Field. That time I think what they're going to call is they're going to call spearing either on number 57, Dallas Hickman, or 49, Michael Thomas. Looked After like it, one of them stuck his helmet into it. Well, Tremaine caught the pass well in front of them. And as he was trying to make a move, so we'll see it right here, to beat number 49, Michael Thomas, he'll slip and fall. And while he's down there, all you have to do is touch him. Number 57, Spearing. There you see the helmet going right into the back of the call is against number 57, Dallas Hickman. Can't have that. That thing's a weapon. Oh, certainly. Rugby ball. players in London, in England. Yeah. The ball is just inside the 44 now of Birmingham as they make a foolish mistake. 444 to play in the first half. Whoa! Look at here. Kevin Long gets the ball, and Jackie Klein, who played for Paul Bryant at Alabama, gets long. Ate him up. <laughs> Let's no check chance. in now with Tim Brandt with Stan White. An emotional game, and the guy that's in the middle, one of the leaders, of course, Stan White. Tell me what was going on out there when they called the, the two flags in a row. Well, I don't, you know, I hate to uh, comment on the officiating. All I can say is the level of play is fine in this league, but we got to work on some of the other areas. Uh, it's tough on the road, and uh, we're getting our share of the uh, bad ones here. So we have to uh, uh, keep our cool. It's tough out there when you got so many things going against you. It's bad enough to play against 11 guys, but uh, we just got to keep going and come back and win this game. Okay, Stan. Keith. Whistle stops it. You're going to get a procedure call against Chicago here to cost them five yards with four minutes to play in the first half. Somebody moved on the left side of the line. Might have been Thayer. So that'll back him up and we'll make it second down and 16. Ball start. Number 61, Tom Thayer, just lifting his hand up probably. Halftime at Giant Stadium, the Meadowland, 17-10, New Jersey leading Los Angeles. Both field goal kickers getting into the ball game. That is the seventh penalty now on Chicago in this ball game, totaling 75 yards. Second down, 16. That's Lenny Willis going in motion, and Scott Fax going to get it. Hatchet hit him, but he gets the pass away, and Lenny Willis can't quite come up with it. Oh boy, did Hatchet lay a blow on Scott. Hatchet got in very, very quickly. They're fortunate man-to-man -man coverage, and Lindy Willis had them beat again on the same route. 
But watch here. You see the excellent pass rush on this play. Putting the pressure, he goes down. Ooh, and Bobby Lane just gets sandwiched in between the big men up front. That was number 70, Drew Taylor. Right there, you see a man-to-man -man coverage. Willie, uh, <laughs> Lenny Willis, getting that single coverage, coming in motion, just couldn't get his hands around the football. Third down and 16. Ball is back at midfield. Three and a half minutes to play in the first half. Birmingham drops deep this time. Scott puts it up to power. Oh, what a great catch by Willis. A one-hander falling down. That time, Lenny Willis <laughs> taking advantage of some very excellent routes. Instead of going in motion and going upfield, he comes in, comes across. Right there, you see him in the middle of the picture. Gets inside. Look at that body control, the concentration as he brings that ball in. What a tremendous catch. Hard to believe the man was out of the game. Scott now six out of eight since he came on in relief of Cagle for 104 yards and a touchdown. It's first down Chicago. Ball is at the Birmingham 29. They give it to Kevin Long and Long finds some room over the left side and he takes it down to about the 21. Mike Raines brought him down. Mike is also an ex tighter played Alabama played nine years in professional ball. He's now 30. Eddie Brown now with Tim Brent. Thanks Keith. Eddie Brown of course the captain of the special teams. He's still upset about that safety. Tell us about it. Eddie. Well you know it's the impetus of the ball if it carries you in the end zone it's just like an interception or any kick. If it carries you into the end zone then you can down it and it's just a touchback. We asked the refs they never heard of the impetus of the ball. They don't even know what they're calling. Okay Eddie. Over the left side again Kevin Long runs into Dallas Hickman Dallas seven year pro out of California 31 years of age and Chicago has another first down as the ball is marked at the 19. Well obviously uh, Chicago <laughs> a little bit upset with a couple of those calls not <laughs> not thinking the officials are doing a very good job out there. I think they've got to really stay along the lines as Dan White was commenting on, get, staying in control. Control yourself. Not letting it get to them. Two minutes to play. Clock stops. An unusual ball game loaded with emotion. And with two to go in the first half, it's Birmingham 11, Chicago 6. Together. Let's go. This message was furnished by the United States Football League. Muggy night in Birmingham. The rain shower just as we started the ball game, cooling things some, but it's created some difficulty on the field for the players. A lot of slipping around, but it's getting somewhat dried off now. And with two minutes to go, Chicago has the ball at the Birmingham 19. First down. Birmingham leading 11 to 6. The clock will stop each time there's a first down made. A change a move, just like in college. That's one of the differences between the USFL and the NFL. Bobby Scott back. Loops it for the corner. Touchdown, Tremaine Johnson. Perfect pass, easy catch. He catches this one over David Evans. And it's really what it really wasn't much of a contest for number two Tremaine Johnson. He, he just came off the line but watch a little subtle moves he makes nothing real dramatic. He's driving him inside gets him just turned a bit doesn't really force himself out to the outside too far leaves himself room to the sideline a good pass by Bobby Scott. Chicago scores a second touchdown in the ball game. Eighth of the year for Tremaine Johnson, who's a big fella. He's 6'3, 190 pounds. Played for Eddie Robinson, of course, Sid Grambley. You know what we probably in this on this field right now, one of them playing, number two, Tremaine Johnson, or the other not, number 86, Jimmy Smith, probably the two best wide receivers in the USFL. Again, Bobby Scott getting good protection, lofts it up. And when Bobby Scott came to Chicago, at practice, he was throwing to Tremaine and Wayman Bugs and Lenny Willis, and he kept underthrowing them. Well, he said New Jersey, where he came from, he wasn't used to receivers who get downfield that fast. So 
he had a little problem adjusting and throwing these receivers, but today looks like he's found Tremaine Johnson with no problem. Again, looking at the central standings to re-emphasize the importance of this ball game, particularly for Birmingham. They are eight and seven. Chicago tied with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is playing at Boston this coming Sunday. That will not be easy. Boston, of course, is in the hunt for an at-large spot themselves with a record of nine and six. So Birmingham has really got to go to the wall tonight and try to win this one because if they should lose tonight and Tampa Bay win Sunday, they're gone. Chicago will go for two now, regaining the lead 12 to 11 with 134 to play in the first half. That's Johnson, the wide man. Bobby Scott rolling it out, gets his pass away, and he was hit by number 21, blitzing strong safety Charles Grandjean. He never really had a chance to get rid of the ball because Grandjean really came thundering in. Well, that's all he had a chance to do was just throw it away, hoping that the receiver would turn around. We've got a conference Quickly. with the officials. I did not see it, still don't see a flag, but let's see. Point is no good. We have a personal foul on number 49 after the kick. Will be assessed on the kickoff. Birmingham's Michael Thomas flagged for a personal foul. A rookie out of Tennessee State. We've had a lot of personal fouls down on that field tonight. The boys are a little hot. Well, neither team, the offense or the defense, has left the field at this point. They seem to think that uh, apparently Chicago seems to feel that they should have another chance at the extra point. He called it a dead ball foul. Situation. Yeah, dead ball situation. So they'll assess it on the kick. We'll just see if we can find it for you. Number 49, right there. The safety. The ball is thrown prematurely. Right there. He just pushes him in the back. <laughs> he knows he's guilty. He was eye eyeing the referee the entire this time. The entire time after he made contact. Well, that's a foolish mistake for a professional athlete to make. Well, it's, it's a foolish mistake, but tempers are running high. He's probably a little bit upset that Lindy Willis has, has been burning their secondary uh, throughout this ball game, making some big catches. Tremaine Johnson, uh, two touchdown catches on the day here in the first half. A little extra push. The 15-yard penalty means Chicago will kick it off from midfield with a minute and a half to play in the first half, and Chicago on top by a point, 12 to 11. And highlights of the second round of the U.S. Open. Played today at the Oakmont Country Club outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At halftime for you. John Mahaffey. Seve Ballesteros. Using the one iron a lot. Played a bit. tight layup. He's got a strong game.